Hey guys, happy Friday and um, welcome to a, another really fun class. Um, today we're going to be doing a netted rope stitch, which is just a really fun um, design that you can change up, make your own. As always, changing the colors is totally a great idea and making it for different seasons. And um, I am going to show you how to build the stitch so that you can take this wherever you'd like to from here. Um, on the mat, what I have to show you is um, the first I've got the one that is in the, the class handout, which is the finished design. And this is one that I made for more of like a Halloween feeling. It's got like, I mean, it's very flowy. So it's, it's really nice. It looks like a little, like a snake or, you know, just um, like a captured orb kind of like design. It, it, it felt very Halloween. So I went with all Halloween colors. And um, the ones that I used are the ones that are in the handout. But um, I didn't use this color in here. I just used the matte black and the opaque gray. And then I mixed up all three of these in like an ombre inside of here. And so that was one colorway. And then I was having a lot of fun with trying to make it brighter so we could change the season for it. You could make like a holiday version. Here's one that I did with sea green and with the, the um, ombre blue packs. Um, this came out really nice. Those are kind of combined up here, but um, I put them together and they came out so beautiful in this design. Um, so this stitch is really versatile. Um, you can also take this to um, different places by changing the counts. I'm going to stick with what is the most common. Everyone usually does a four count as a beginner. And so try the four count and see if you like it. And then if you want to, you can always start with like a five count or change it up and make a three count. But this is a stitch that works with different counts. So just wanted to make sure I mentioned that. Um, at the end, I'm going to finish it with some findings. These are stainless steel, lobster claw, and two different sizes of jump rings. These jump rings are, um, the big ones really helped with getting it to kind of like launch up from the work. And they fit inside of the 6-0 seed bead, which was really cool. Because then I can just join it together with the six millimeter jump ring. These are 10 millimeter, six millimeter, bringing that onto a lobster claw. So that's just one innovative and quick and easy way to finish your netted rope that doesn't involve a special kind of like a clasp attachment or anything complex at the end. Adding thread is easy here. Um, I used Wildfire, the 0.06, and I used a size 10 leading needle. You can use size 10 or size 12, whichever works for you, but um, I think today I'm using a size 10. And again, the wildfire is that 0 0.006. So I'm just going to jump in. Um, the colors in the handout, of course, are these opaque black and gray. I think they'll be easy to see. I was going to give it a try, but let me know if you want me to switch to a brighter uh, as we get going. We'll have time to repeat this many times. So. Um, because it's actually a very easy stitch and the um, steps are repeated over and over. So be able to show starting it and we'll show adding thread and then just weaving in. And that's really, that's really all there is to it. It's pretty good. So comfortable working length of thread, whatever that is for you. I think in the handout, I put like 90 inches, 90 inches is great. Or you can also put um, less or more, whatever works for you. You'll have to add thread probably two times if you make one that's this long. This one is about eight inches. Um, but if you want to make it longer or shorter, make a necklace, just know that adding thread is very simple. So cut something that works. I'm going to do for the demo probably closer to 40, just so that I'm not hitting the camera and everything. All right. And, um, oh, I didn't show yet, but you will also need some scissors. And then if you have handy, some chin nose, flat nose pliers, something like that, it'll help you with getting your needle threaded. I'll show you that in just a second. So I'm going to trim that. And I labeled this as an intermediate stitch, but really it's very beginner friendly. Um, I just always tend to label round stitches as intermediate because they're 3D. So it's a little harder to just intuit the, from an illustration, but really this is an easy stitch and I think you'll love it. What I did there is I used my pliers to flatten the end of the wildfire. And that just makes it so much easier to get through your needle. And then just fold it over about seven inches or so. It's working on a single strand. And let me get my keyboard tray out of the way here. There we go. Okay, so you'll want to start with 
some size six seed beads and I used three different colors. I ombre them, um, but for my first four like section, it's I used four of the hematite over here. It looks like I used, I started with hematite there. I tried to symmetrically end it, but this is up to you how you'd like to do this color blocking. I did five rows of each, it looks like for these, but any combination is gonna work. Here's the version where I just did four. So let me show you guys what I mean by that. Starting with just the gray, which is a nice easy to see color. And then for the other color, I'm gonna use the, um, I'm gonna use two colors so that it's super clear um, what the net point is and what the rest of the stitch is being constructed with. So here's my main color. And again, that's matte black. And then here's my net point. This color is the one that we're gonna be going through over and over again as each row steps up. So there's my net point color. Okay. So we're gonna leave about a 12 inch tail for this step. And step one here, I'm gonna move up a little bit, make sure you guys can see everything I'm doing. Okay, so the first thing you'll wanna do is string a size six seed bead and then a size 10 seed bead, a size six, a 10, a six and a 10 another six and another 10. So what you're going for is four of each of those, just kind of stacked like that. And I'll just bring it down again. I'm leaving about 12 inches to weave in later. And I didn't mention this in the handout because I didn't think of it at the time, but it is actually possible to build on this stitch in both directions. So if you want, you could leave a super long tail and come back and start working from that side in the other direction. It works great. So if you want to do that, that is another idea that you can employ. I'm gonna go back through all these beads. So this is my working side. And this is the tail side here. I'm gonna go back through all of them. So our, our goal here is to form a ring. And when I get about there, I'm gonna go back through the first size six bead. That's the one that we started with. And my needle just kind of naturally went through that next bead, the tenno. I'm going to let it stay there because that's where we're going anyway. That's our goal is to get through one of those. So there's the first one. And so just a really pretty little stitch. You might think it looks a lot like a, like a right angle weave stitch, but very similar. You can reinforce this if you like by going back through. And if you're planning to come back later and build from this side, maybe you can skip this step. Also knowing that you'll be weaving in your tail through here. All right, so I'm exiting from any of the tens. It doesn't really matter which 10 you exit from, just pick one. Any 10 will work. And now I'm gonna start building net points. And all of this, in case you're, um, in case you're wondering, like, do I have to memorize all this? It's all here, all the counts and everything. These counts that I'm gonna show you are their counts you can change. So based on the beads you're using, for example, if you weren't using a four millimeter slash six O bead, you could switch this to be more to go over like a six millimeter gemstone, for example. So this is a versatile stitch. You can do a lot with that. And the only really way to generate these counts yourself is to just test it, feel it out, test it. You'll have to make a few rows to see how it flows, but these counts are optional. This works great for a six O seed bead. Um, and again, these are 10 O check beads, the small ones um that I'm using here so we're going to go three so three of the size tens then you need one net point and then three size tens and I'm going to skip over my 60 bead so jump right over that bead and go right through the next size 10 bead so just like that And so it should just kind of like pop like that. You should get a little, like looks almost like a flower. And I'm gonna repeat that three more times. So I'm gonna pick up three beads here. One net point, three more. Heading in the same direction, skipping over the 6-0, I'm gonna go through my next 10. Okay. 
for the next flower. So we're going to end up with what looks like a catcher foil by the time we get to the end here. Yeah, and I saw a comment in the chat from Maria. That's absolutely right. It can work with 11.0 just fine. The reason I like the 10.0, um, just to give someone a, a tip, um, if you want to make your point bead or the net tip bead, and I'll show you what I mean by that next, but this bead here in the center, the gray one, you want to make that a um, make that a bead with a large hole, like with an internal hole diameter that's generous. And 11.0 check is a little tinier than the 10 and it, it'll it work, but it'll be tighter to, for the multiple passes that you have to make. And I'll show you what I mean by that coming up right next. So I'm going through the 10 bead. I wanna make sure I point out, cause we're about to do something called a step up, but I'm going through that 10 bead. That's the last one that was in my first original join of four. I'm going through it, go ahead and pull it tight and we'll get that last little petal. And now I'm gonna step up. And what I mean by stepping up is I need to go through the first four beads that we strung in this round. So those were the first three of these and the net point bead. So coming up through these three and now I'm gonna go through the net point bead. And I'm gonna explain um, a little bit more about what I was mentioning about the hole diameter. So this is my second pass through that 10 bead. In the next step, we're going to make an additional pass through it. So a total of three passes through that bead. And that's the only thing to think about um, when you're selecting your net point bead. So you could do like 11 and then maybe um, use a 10 um, for your net point. I think that would work too. Um, but just think about that when you're test it. I would say test it out and make sure that it works for you and it flows nicely or switch to a size 12 beading needle and that might solve it too. So from here, we're going to need more size six beads. So pick up another 6-0. Skip over all the black beads. So we're going to skip over all of the connector beads here and just go through the next net point. And when you do that, it's not going to immediately form like a round tube just yet, but it'll start to. Here's another 6-0. Let's go through. We'll bring one more. Over here. These are each, each of these is passing through the next net point. Here's the last one. And so at this stage, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little more tension to it. And if it helps, you can pass back through the 6-0 and the next net point. Sometimes overlapping the thread with itself it can help you create tension. And so there it is. What you're going for is for those beads to kind of form into another square, sort of like they did before when we started it. And so there's the starting side and there's the side we just finished. So now we need to build more little net points. So I'm gonna get three more beads. Three more, one more. One, two, three. So there's that. And all I'm gonna do next is just go from net point to net point keeping the direction that I'm, I'm going. So my thread's exiting this side, right? So I wanna make sure I travel around in what I think is counterclockwise for me. If you're if you're headed the other direction, just stay consistent. Some people might've started their, their stitch going the other direction and that's okay. You just wanna do the same thing now. Once you've chosen the direction, you'll have to stick with that. There's three more. through. And what we're going for is that four petal shape, or um, as my little one pointed out earlier. It also looks like, I don't know if any of you guys are watching, 
um, or were watching like when Stranger Things was out. But this totally looks like the Demogorgon when you add the last little petal. <laughs> Doesn't it? <laughs> it's so funny. If you did a 5.1, it would be like really uncanny. But stepping up here. So what we did is we went through the last net point there. And now we're going to step up through. Sometimes for me, it's easier to step up in two parts. So getting through these is easy in one swoop. And then continuing through my next net point. And so all you got to do next is your sixes. And this is the fun part because it just brings it all together. So pick up a 6-0. And then you go through the next net point and pull tight. And go through the next net point. There you go. Here's one more. And again, I like to go through one more 6 0 and one more net point because for some reason it makes it easier to get that square, that really pretty square going. And so, what that means is I essentially made four passes through one of those 10 0 beads. And I'm working with the 0 0.006 and a size 10 beading needle, and it did just great. So that worked. But um, with the 11 0, just pay attention to that. It might be just a smidge tighter. But yeah, so um, that is the, oh, that's the whole thing. That's really it. Um, let's see, let me check in. I'm gonna make, um, yeah, exactly. Kelly is saying exactly the thought that I had when I first tried this stitch is how intricate does that look? Like, it looks crazy. It looks like somebody worked so hard, but it's so easy. It's the same thing over and over again. And it looks just as beautiful with all different size beads and different colors. And you can change up so many things and get some very beautiful results. I'm going to add one more. And then I was going to ask if you guys wouldn't mind dropping in the chat, if you would like to see me start it again. Danielle, I can tell you, um, yeah. yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. If, if there is any way, and I don't want to mess up your um, table and what you've designed today, is if you could try a different color as well. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Let's definitely do that. So um, we have a couple of people who came to class late today and uh, would absolutely love to see you start over. Sounds good. Let me clear oh. these really quick. I'm Perfect. The, um, I'm just going to sweep these in. And then what do you guys think of these colors? The ones I was working with earlier. I, blue, blue is always our favorite. So and that green will be awesome. And awesome. Danielle, I, I want to speak to you um, in case you don't see this message from Kathy on behalf of all of us, like who in the world figured out this pattern? And um, you've really made something that looks so complicated so much easier. Oh, thank you. Now that that means the world to hear that because that's my goal. That's been my hope is to show how easy it is so we can all become addicted to sea beating together. Yes. I found these little trays at the checkout at Michael's and I- <laughs> Of course. <laughs> they, I am the um, ultimate impulse buyer ever, always. <laughs> and so what I did for this one, I'm gonna switch over to my other design. In this and, one, and I was I'll, using, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to tell you, we do have some new people. So um, if you could just show the threading of the needle, that would be perfect. Oh yes, yeah, I'll show that again too. Um, so what I'm laying out here on the mat so far is I have three different colors of size 6 seed beads, and that's just following the design in the handout. We, we ombre them. And um, the colors I'm showing here are brighter and easier to see. And in the handout, we use some dark, smoky ones for Halloween. Any colors are going to work great for you. Um, my recommendation, go to Michael's, pick up one of the three-pack 6 O's, and pick up one of the three-pack 10 O's, and you'll have everything you need. Um, and then Maria was saying you could use 11 and she's totally right. You can use 11 um, switch to a size 12 beading needle if you're going to do the 11 Okay, and so I used this bright color as my outer, and then I used this nice opaque color as my net point. I might do the opposite for this one just to see how it looks, because I was having that thought as I was stitching along. 
like the darker color as the outside color might be cool too. Let's try it. Let's see how it looks. So um, earlier I was showing the thread. This is the 0 0.006 wildfire. And it's a good thread choice for this one because um, as I was mentioning, the multiple passes that you have to do through a kind of small bead if you're doing this design. Now, there's no reason you can't change the net point to an 80. I think it would still work. Um, it would look different. It would have a different flow, but it would it still work. Um, I, what I did here is these are some chain nose, flat nose pliers, and I flatten the end of the wildfire. And that just makes it a lot easier to get through a needle. This is a size 10 beading needle. And all of these um, the part numbers are in the PDF that was um, in the materials list for the class. And if you're looking for it after class, they're um, usually they're in the description of the YouTube video. And we also put it on our blog too. That's blog.johnbead.com. Um, so I, I thread the needle, I fold it over about seven inches and the, for the amount to cut, um, in the handout, it tells you about 90 inches, which is a good working length for, for me, but anywhere 60 to 90 inches is fine. The length you cut isn't, the, isn't super important because you're going to add thread and it's not hard to add thread. Um, so go ahead and pick up um, a size six bead and then one size 10 seed bead and repeat that till you have a total of four each. So here's four size six seed beads spaced by four size 10 seed beads. You want to start with that. Bring that down, leave about a 12 inch tail. So there's my tail side, there's my working side and come back through all those beads again. And then when you get, get a ring shape formed that looks like that, Go ahead and just continue on through the next 6-0 and through the next 10 OC bead. And you can use the tail thread and the working thread to tighten. So just pulling them, pulling them like that, and you'll get this little pop. And that looks super cute. And I'm going to weave through just a few more to tighten it up. And this is optional. You can just see how yours is feeling if you feel like you need to reinforce it or not. Keep going. So again, this is just going through all the beads again to make it tighter. Looking at where I'm exiting, I'm exiting from a size 10 seed bead right here. I think I'm going to go through the next ones here just to get away from my tail. And there we go, reinforced. So I'm going to start building, uh, building the net. And also I wanted to point out um, an optional thing you can think about when you're starting your work. So when I started, you guys will notice when I started this one, um, let me grab the other one here, that I actually used my, so let me show you, this is going to be my net point, and this is going to be my connectors, but I used my connector beads as the spacer here, and I didn't do that here. So you can see both directions. Um, it doesn't really matter just if you want to have this end color be all like one versus seeing the net point color. This is all just like, what color do you want to see at the end where your clasp is? So on this one, it looks like I went with the, the gray. You can see the grays there, which is my net point color throughout this design. So pick the color, it doesn't really matter, just stick with it. And then I'm going to use this one as my connector now. So I've got three of these. Here's my net point color is going to be this one. Is that going to stand out enough? Yeah, it seems like it's okay. Uh, and then there's three more. And going back to our little ring we have here, what you'll want to do is skip over your 6 o seed bead and go through the size 10. And when you pull that tight, those beads will form like a little point. So these are my connector beads the dark blue, and the light blue luster is my net point bead. 
And so on this design, I used my net point beads in the starting ring. And on the last one, I didn't. So it's totally up to you, which whatever you like. There's three connector beads. Here's one, one net point. And three connectors. I'm gonna jump over. Get my tail out of the way there. Jumping over the six and going through the next tenno. I'm gonna pull that tight. Here's the next little section. And we're gonna jump over the 6 and go through the 10 -o. And let's do that one more time. There we go. So that's step one, all set. Step, well, rows one and two actually, but the first step is getting that little flower which has a lot of um, potential if you look at it for other designs you can do. It kind of gives me, it gives me a lot of ideas, just that one little part. And this is the um, step up. I'm about to do a step up. So from here, I'm going through exiting from this bead. This is the 10 OC bead that we strung in the very first ring. But what I need to do is travel up through all three of those and through this one so I can keep going. And at the end of every round, you'll need to do this. Every time you add the, the net point round, you'll need to step up. So there's through those. What I find happens for me naturally with my needle is it just wants to go through the first three. And then I end up going through the net point in a separate swoop. But every time you do this, it actually makes it into a nice pretty point. Um, and the next step we're gonna do is gonna do that for all four of them. So from here, you'll wanna pick up uh, size six seed bead. Skip all of those connector beads and just go for that next net point. So if you're doing the stitch for the first time, having these two different colors really helps for that. Otherwise, you have to sit and kind of count them a little bit to know which one is the point. Which isn't hard, it's just something extra, right, that you have to do. But this one is easy. We just go through the light blue bead, go through the next one. So we're just picking them up, picking them up, going around. It's loose right now. It'll tighten up after we get through this next part. Here's the last net bead. Going through that one. Get that tail out of the way there. All right, so in total, we've got this going all the way around through each of the net points. And one of the things I find helps with tension to get it to tighten up is to go ahead and go through the next 6-0 and the next 10 -0. For some reason, which I can't explain why, it just makes it easier to get it to do that, which is what you want. It doesn't need to be like incredibly tight, like super tight, because you do want the, the bracelet to kind of have some movement. So a little bit of space here is okay, um, but too much space wouldn't work very well for your design. And if you feel like you need more, which this one, for some reason, I feel like I need more. So I'm gonna go through one more time, and there we go. All right, so you're going for that. And now we gotta make more net points. So each of these now turns into kind of like the side of a drum. And that's what you wanna see after that step. Then for some reason, all the next ones, they just kind of pop into place better than the first one does, as is true for so much bead weaving. But we're just gonna create more of these. So three and then one different color and then three. And again, I'm gonna skip over my 6-0, go through my next light blue bead. There's one. And here's another set. Skipping over that 6-0 bead and go through the next net point. Super, super, super easy and addicting. That is so pretty. I love this green. I think that's my one of my favorite check colors. It's like an olive 
kind of olive green. It's in a few of the mixes in different sizes too. So here uh, we're we're going to do one more trip through the last uh, the last light blue net point, and this is the step up. So it's the only part where you just want to kind of take a quick look at where you are. So you've got that formed. That's all done, but we need to get up to this net point now, so we can start the next row. So I'm going to go through all three of these, and usually I can just get through the three like that. And then I'll go back and go through my net point. There it is. And this is, in case anyone's wondering, it is the same exact stitch flat, but flatter is harder. This is one of those rare things where like the round stitch is easier than the flat stitch. I don't know why. I think it has to do with the sides of the turn or something. But this one just flows. There's the next 6 bead. There's the next one. Here's the next one. And so now you guys are probably starting to see what I meant earlier about this being a four point design. And I'm traveling through the next six O, next 10 O. But there's no reason you can't change that to be a five point or a three point, which is the only thing about three point is it doesn't uh, bend as easy, but it's still totally works. The stitch like structure works. So if you were doing earrings or something, it would be fine. Or if you were just making a beaded bead, that works great too. But yeah, so that's the whole stitch. Um, from here, I can do a few more rows. You just want to see it grow. Um, I can show adding thread, which we definitely want to show that. It's easy, but still helps to see it. Danielle, while you've been busy working, on the sidebar, we're all realizing this is the stitch of our dreams. So <laughs> thank you very, very much. It's going well. Um, we, do have, we do have a couple new people today. So I agree with you that showing how to add thread will be helpful. And for the rest of us, always a great reminder. And um, yes, if you would just show maybe one more round and just okay. do your slow, um, exactly what you're doing. And um, then definitely there are a lot of people who are curious about how you end it. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So this is the, um, the last little petal for this one, for this round. And it's the same, um, the same steps we've been doing. I'm just adding three in one color and then a net point in another color, three in one color. And then from here, we've got to jump over our 6-0 bead and go through our next size 10. And if you can do it, sometimes it'll let me get my step up started. It doesn't always work. I don't insist on it. Sometimes I'll just go through the net point, but you definitely, you need to connect this bead here. That's your finishing the row. And then this is the step up here. And make sure you get through all of the next four beads to exit from the top point there. And then just, uh, let's see, where am I at? One, two, three, I'm gonna do one more in this color. And then after that, I'll change colors for my 6-0. There's one. And last one, through that net point. And from here, I would just build those petals again, all the way around back through this one and then step up. And that's the whole design in one swoop there. And eventually what you'll get is you'll get one that's super long and you'll start to run out of thread at some point right, right around here. If you did the full 90 inches, you'll get about this far roughly. Um, and from there, you'll wanna add thread. This is my starting side. I can tell that because this is my 12 inches of length over here. And this over here is my finishing side. And it looks like I left a little bit shy of seven inches, which is shorter than I usually recommend letting the thread get, but I wanted to end at a certain spot. It is easier to add your thread from this than from the petals. Although it doesn't actually, um, you know, it doesn't really matter 
what row you end on. I just found this was easier because it stays it stays put more than the petal rows do while you're trying to weave through them. So the this one um, is great. And I'm gonna grab my thread. And so just cut whatever you know is a comfortable length for you of your next round of thread. And then I'm gonna show you real quick again, when you wanna get your needle threaded, just grab some chain nose pliers and flatten out your end. And then grab your needle. Let's see where mine went. Mine is still over here, I'm gonna borrow this one. So here's a size 10 beading needle, and then I'm gonna just go through Hold over about seven inches, just like we did before. And now it's time to join this one. So the two things you want to look at, um, although I do want to say it would still work even if you ended up going the opposite direction. So, but right now my my strands are going this way. They're going around counterclockwise. It's headed this direction, right? I'm gonna to try to match that just because why not? But it honestly would still work even if you found yourself, oops, um, I'm headed this way. Don't don't sweat it. It'll still work. But just because I can, and it's a good habit to get into, I'm going to try to match my direction. So what I did is I came in through a net point here, and I'm leaving a little tail here. My goal is just to stitch around until when I pull on this side, that side doesn't move anymore. This is one of those um, stitches where I wouldn't recommend knotting because on the off chance you have to get back in there, you won't be able to get back through um, your 10 bead if you put a knot in front of it. That said, if you like to knot, it's it's okay. You can still do that. But what I've done here is I've traveled. So following the existing thread path, in case that's new to anybody, is you just go through the beads and you just go through them in the way that your existing thread is already traveling and you're just matching it. And, and eventually as you weave around, it'll create enough friction and resistance that your tail thread stops moving entirely. And then you know you've got a solid weave in. And I, I like to keep track of like how many trips around I did, how many turns I made, because then I can remember that for weaving in my old working thread later, what kind of worked there. But I'm almost one full rotation and I'm doing a mix of going up and down through the net point and then going through the six O beads. I'm just kind of just changing it up and seeing what works. And now I'm gonna test it over here. Once I kind of come back to my original thread, let's test it now just to show you what I mean. But so this is the tail of the thread we just added right here. This is the working side of that. If I pull on it, I can get it to move, but I really have to pull on it. So it's it's already pretty good and I didn't even make a full rotation yet. So pretty easy. Um, now, now that I know it's pretty good, I'm gonna start aiming for this spot right here to exit from where my old working thread is. And this is just a good best practice for this design. It actually doesn't matter. You can just weave to exit from any net point and your design is gonna work great. The reason I am bothering to mention it is if you had a pattern, because you can do patterns with this stitch and they have beautiful ones on Etsy and online that you can purchase from designers that are stunning. But if you're following a pattern, knowing how to um, add new thread, and being in number one, going in the same direction and exiting from right where you left off is important only for that, really. But here we are joining our old thread. For those of you who love to knot, you could knot these together. But with the disclaimer that do that knot after you've made your last pass of this, because we're going to make another pass through that bead as we come around and create our next petals. If you were to put a knot here now, you wouldn't be able to get through it. So if you do want a knot, you could um, create your petals first. And then when you make your next pass through here, you can knot to this one, bring this through a few beads and trim it. But what I like to do is to create maybe three, four more rows and then take my old thread and just bring it up into those new rows. And then I have no knots and I don't have to worry about getting through my beads again. I'm gonna trim this one, it's solid. I'm gonna leave my old working thread in place for now, just ignore it and start building more rows. So in this case, these were my connectors. And that was my net point. 
These are my connectors. And skipping over the 6LB and then going through my next net point. I do that three more times. Going around. And here's one more. Last one. And so here's that one where we've got our old working thread exiting. So I'm just coming through that one. And I'm about to do my step up. But before I do my step up, if I was a knotter, I could take these two right here and I could go ahead and knot them and then keep going. But um, I'm just going to leave it here for now. I'm going to make another row and then bring it up into that. So here's my step up going through the first four beads that we strung in this round. So those three connector beads and here's the new net point bead. And I'm doing one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So I want to do four of these guys. I want to stick with my ombre that I have going here. Here's a 6 0 bead. Next net point. And so on. So that's pretty much it for adding thread. Super duper easy to do. It didn't take very long either. I feel like it's fast add. And there we go. Danielle, while you're holding it, um, someone was asked, how does the rope feel? Is it stiff? Is it, could it collapse? It's really flowy. Netted rope is one of my favorite stitches, even done without a connector bead inside. But I mean by like a filler bead. This is a stitch you can do with no filler beads. Like, you know, the step where we add these and go around in a circle. If you skip that entirely and just keep doing net points, it's it's another stitch entirely, but it also works really great. It's the flowiest stitch I think I know about. Like even with this not even being very long, I can get it to connect. And the other cool thing is you can easily connect these as a bangle by just doing an extra net point. But yeah, super flowy, super fun. Um, Here's the longer one. Like you can really coil it. And one thing I was I was noticing earlier, I've been playing around with other different um, like threads, and I noticed that wildfire is a um, as a stiffener. So great for beginners because wildfire is its thickness makes your stitches lock easier. It's not wobbly. If you're using like a size D Nymo or something similar to that, those kind of beading threads, especially in a flat stitch there, you, you make up, you make a stitch and you pull it tight. And then before you start working your next part, they start loosening. That's the cool thing about wildfire is it doesn't do that. But the downer for wildfire is it makes things thicker and stiffer. So, but this is even with 0.006, this is still still pretty good and it's just the, the nature of the net right now the tighter you pull your net like if you're just going crazy and you're just really tightening it that is going to make it less flowy the other thing that will make it less flowy is if you have multiple passes like for example if you wove this old strand back down you'd have a spot here that's a little stiffer than the rest of your work um so I, that's what another reason i always weave my new my old thread uh, into my new rows just to kind of lessen the amount of times and lessen the bulk that you have in any section so that it still has that movement. And it's something you'll just feel like you'll get it, like you'll start stitching it and you'll be like, oh yeah, I see that. And you'll have your own preferences and your own, you know, like idea for what thread you like and things like that. But yeah, so that's pretty much it. Did I, um, did I lose anybody? Have anyone have any questions on? No. Uh, so far, so good, Danielle. And of course, you know, how do you do the clasp? The clasp is so easy. Oh my goodness. So um, I used, and of course you can change this up, but I was really drawn to using the big jump rings for this. So these are a 10 millimeter. The ones I have here are stainless steel. 
but you can also find them in sterling silver and uh, 18 karat gold plated. So if you're trying to match your colors, you can do that. And I need four of them because I use two on one side, or actually it looks like on this side, I made a pretty chain. So I need more than four. I need four plus two, so six there. But to do this connection here, you're gonna need just two of the 10 millimeter jump rings and one six millimeter. So let's put six of those out. And then I'm gonna get two of these, or how many of these do I need? I need one for the lobster claw. And then I actually wanna have two down here. I thought that looked cool. That was like a little like chain I made with that. And I think in the handout, there is a close up picture of that. So you can see it. So this is one side. And then here's my other side chain. And then, yeah, there we go. And last but not least, I need a lobster claw clasp. And again, this is the stainless and it is a 15 by nine millimeter. It's a nice um, size for this size of a rope. I like to match my lobster claw sizes to the, this is a pretty thick rope. It's like, it's big. These are eight millimeter beads to give you an idea. So it's bigger than, it's like a 10 millimeter in height size. So it looks really nice with kind of like a 15 millimeter lobster claw. All right, so I don't have any of my strands woven in, but just ignore that. I'm gonna work around it. And I need some pliers. Here's some chain nose and let's see. I like to use bent nose, but just, you know, anything like two chain nose pliers or whatever you use to open and close jump rings. I know a lot of folks have those little ring tools, which are very cool too. But I grip one side. And in fact, um, those are my chain nose, but I also have, let's see where those are. Oh, I hid them for myself up here. I also have square nose. I don't know if you guys have ever seen like the big flat square nose ones, but I actually really like those for jump rings more than chain nose pliers because they hold more. And these are a big jump ring. So they hold just a little bit more in place. So all the jump rings, in case anyone's new to open and close them, they have a seam. You can see it. And I'll point the seam kind of like away from me. And then I'll take two pairs of pliers and just open them in a lateral motion. So you're bending forward and just kind of sustaining the position of the other side. So you get something like that. And then come over here and go ahead and put it through a bead. So there's one side. And this one is not um, woven in very tightly. So I'm gonna to need to pull on it a little bit each time. But I'm probably going to come back and finish this because it's not quite long enough for me. So I don't want to leave it in just yet. But I can still demo getting these on there. And you want, and it says in the handout, you want to end on a row where the 6 beads are the last thing you added. So there's jump ring on one side. Got that through one bead there. Let me get my jump ring through this one. And the reason I like the bent nose is you can really get in there and close it easier. Listen for the click. I'll tighten that up. Okay, so now I have two jump rings. One's going one way, one's going the other. Bring those together like that and get a smaller jump ring. So I'm looking for my six millimeter. That is the six millimeter here. I'm going to open up that. Join these two together. Both of those 10 millimeter jump rings, join it with a six. Bring on your lobster claw. And then just close that up. So there's one side done. Let's flip to the other. Same thing over here. Connect those. And another thing that I did is I matched it. So let me show you what I mean. I'm through this one and this one here on this side. So I just kind of just let it flow naturally and then just choose the ones that are kind of corresponding. So coming on down here, it's a not required, but I was just being, um, 
a perfectionist about it. So there's through that six millimeter bead. And of course, all of these extra little strings would be woven in beforehand. Just by following your thread path around, if you make one full rotation, changing it up by going through your sixes and tens, you'll end up with a really good weave in and you can just trim it with your scissors. There's that. Another really cool thing about going through your um, 6 seed bead is the jump rings, um, they're not gonna come loose. And then they typically don't anyway if you close them really well, but sometimes when you finish a threaded design with a jump ring, you've gotta worry about that thread coming through the seam. Here, you don't have to worry about that at all. It just does it. So what I did for my chain to make my chain is I made, that's a six millimeter bead joining those. Then I opened up another 10 millimeter and just joined it to the six. And you can always build this first before attaching it. Then I would do another six and another 10. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Just like that. And it's really pretty when it's done and it looks super flowy. I know, I love that. So it could, you know, whatever size wrist your customer could be, um, that'll be helpful as well. Yeah, that's a great idea. And then of course you can always travel. Like if you're selling in person, bring them with you and some tools and you can always adjust it for people on the spot when they try it on. That often sells a bracelet, makes the difference in the first first sellers in person. But yeah, so I'm gonna probably finish, make this just a little longer. And then I'll come back and, uh, you know, uh, add my clasps again, because I can just take them off from where I am here and then post them. I actually finished the ones that I did from last week. I don't know if you guys are curious and you want to see, but I finished our last week designs all. What, what ends up happening is I have samples like this from teaching. I have bunches of them. I think there's another one floating around here too somewhere. <laughs> but Sometimes I'll finish them. And last week I finished our herringbone one. So now I have three of those. <laughs> so yeah, any, any questions before I move this? Um, how long do you make the beaded part? Um, yeah, and I'll definitely show those, Cindy. Um, so for the beaded part, uh, let's see. So the this comes into bracelet sizing and it's tricky because like I was showing earlier, this is um, treat it like you would a 10 millimeter bead design, meaning it's gonna have some height on your wrist, which means you want to add a little bit of length. Um, this one is with the clasp on about eight inches, but I could have done a little less if I wanted to. I just, um, the reason it's the length it is, is I was stuck on my pattern and I wanted it to end symmetrically. So that's what I did. But if I had the opportunity to go back and change the counts here, I would change it from, I think in fact, some of these is five and six, I would make sure that they're all like four and then I would have a little more leeway. Like this one is exactly every four loops. So how you count that is see, it's got one, two, three, and four, that's four rounds. Versus over here, I was doing like one, two, three, four, six rounds. It really doesn't matter how many, but it can help you have more um, precision if you really wanted it to end on the same color it started, for example, just something to think about when you're planning it. The measurement, let me get you a measure for four is, yeah. So if you do an ombre of four, this right here is one inch. So each of these is coming up as one inch for me on my measuring mat. So make sure you guys actually, um, this is one inch here or hang on, let's go over here. It's coming up to exactly one. But yeah, test it out because your tension might give you just a slight difference, but it's going to be in the noise. It's going to be pretty close. So let me bring up what I did last week. And to recap, last week we were doing this design. And so I finished all of the samples. And this is live on YouTube now. If you missed it last week, this one is there. And then I added bees. <laughs> These were also in my uh, unfinished pile from previous classes, and I decided they looked nice together. So I finished them and I'm gonna bring these up uh, to Toronto when I go visit next week, along with the original, which was um, this one right here. 
I just thought that looks cool. So this is um the same counts, but this one has different counts. It came out really nice. I was excited about how this looked, and they're very Halloweeny, but they could also you could use them for Halloween and Easter if you want to. <laughs> you kind of go for both. And yeah, so there's that. And then um, let's see, we're really close to time, but let me throw next week's on the mat so you can see what we're doing in the future. So next week is a workshop. One, two, three, drop peyote. It's on the 21st. I believe that's the day we're doing that. If I have that right? No, because this is the 21st. Hold up. It's the 29th. Because Monday the 31st is Halloween. So <laughs> yeah, I think so. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is the Friday before Halloween that we're doing this one. It's a workshop. It's two hours and it's called one, two, three. 28, workshop. Danielle. 28. Thank you. <laughs> yes. I've learned don't trust my dates. I never have that right. Like so bad. Uh, and then our first November class, this is on the 4th, November 4th, um, is a woven basket weave bracelet. And that's so cute. I love this one. This one is really fun. Um, and then it's some earrings. We're going to do some turquoise stitch up. These actually are very cool. I like the way these look. They came out so good. It's on a little how light turquoise bead. And then we put some crystal. These are a great holiday gift. So I'm starting to get into that gift mode. I don't know if you guys are too, but that's where I where I'm coming from there. And then this is like your epic gift. Um, and this is a relative of this one. This is the flat version of the stitch. So if you wanted to learn the flat version, which is just a little bit more tricky because of this little side turn. But again, that's with the four millimeter crystal. I think I saw a question pop up earlier. Someone asked me, hey, can I swap out a four millimeter bicone for my six OC bead? And that is, yeah, absolutely. And here's how it looks. Looks great. And just the difference is it's flat, only difference there. And so that's the last November. And then we're into December, which is crazy. In December, I have the first two done. Um, there's some holiday bangles. Um, these ones are super easy. They're another round stitch, but they're peyote. And we'll join those. And then last but not least, the December, the last free class of December is this, these earrings here. And they're the ones I was wearing just today. They're like a flash chenille bib with the little you know, strands. They really hang kind of cool because they hang in 3D like that. And I'll, I'll explain more about that when we get closer to that class. But that's another one where you'll be able to pull the PDF off of the Michaels website and, and build that one. And it's coffee and cream <laughs> with crystal. So it came out really cool. I don't have the workshop done yet. That one I'm still working on, but that's the rest of the year. And then we're in 2023. How did that happen? I don't even know. <laughs> I'm going to switch back and say hi to you guys over here. How do I do that? There you go. I don't think I said hi yet in person. <laughs> but so yeah, we're, um, next week, uh, we're doing the workshop. And then I will catch you guys back for um, our basket weave bracelet on November 4th. That's our next free one that we've got coming up. So I hope to see you there and I hope to see you for all of them, actually. And I want to wish you a great happy weekend um, with all of your creative um, juices going. And if you need any help, you know where to find me. I'm uh, at Danielle Wicks Jewelry, or you can also tag us uh, with Make It With Michaels or tag uh, John Bead. And then you can also join our Facebook group post there. We love seeing uh, all of your great, beautiful creations. So have a great week, weekend, and uh, I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.